If you live on the Wirral, near to Chester or Flintshire, you may have recently seen numerous signs popping up which say RDX along with a number. The signs don't really provide much information for the public and are instead intended for contractors to locate construction sites, which stretch from Stanlow to Sandycroft and then to just outside of Flint. RDX is just an abbreviation for road crossing and the sites are for the construction of a new CO2 pipeline which is being constructed to capture CO2 from some of the biggest emitters in North West England and North Wales and transport it to Liverpool Bay where it will be pumped into depleted gas reservoirs. To do this the existing Douglas gas processing platform will be replaced with a new platform that will distribute the CO2 to three reservoirs in Liverpool Bay. I won't cover the pros and cons of carbon capture and storage in this video, but Cheshire West has been identified as one of the largest emitters of CO2 per capita in the UK, and CCS is seen as a vital part in reducing that. The pipeline will link to the Protoss Energy Cluster, which is being developed to the northeast of Elton. The cluster will be formed from a number of new energy facilities which will include hydrogen production and an energy from waste facility. Another pipeline will also be constructed from Heidelberg Material Cement Works at Badeswood. The process of making cement produces a lot of CO2, and as such, Badeswood emits around 800,000 tonnes a year. The recovery process aims to capture all of this and send it via the Badeswood Spur pipeline to Liverpool Bay. A further pipeline is planned, which will connect to the Virador Energy from Waste facility in Runcorn, which is another large emitter of CO2 in Cheshire. This pipeline is currently in the planning phase. Plans are also being developed to build a new combined cycle gas power station next to the existing Connors Key power station. This new power station would be constructed with the ability to capture CO2 and send it along the pipeline. Connors Key will make use of an existing gas pipeline, so it's not covered directly by the new pipeline scheme. High net CO2 will also make use of the existing pipeline, with a new spur connected to the existing pipe just to the south of Flint. As part of the plans, Point of Air Gas Terminal will be decommissioned and repurposed to compress CO2 before it is piped to the Douglas Processing Platform. Returning back to the new spur pipelines, they will take the form of underground pipes ranging in diameter from 508mm or 20 inches to 914mm or 36 inches. A smaller 20 inch diameter 4.5km pipe will connect the Protoss cluster to an above ground installation or AGI on the edge of the Stanlow site. A further 31 km 36 inch pipeline will run from this AGI to the existing gas pipeline. A further 16 inch spur will run from Padeswood and will connect to the new 36 inch pipe close to Northup. The vast majority of the pipeline will be buried, however a number of above ground installations will be constructed along its route. AGIs are required where pipelines meet and to allow for routine inspections and maintenance of the pipe. Installation of the pipe will require the establishment of a linear site, which will typically be 32 metres wide, although compounds and road crossing locations will have larger footprints. Other than the signs saying RDX, the only visible signs of construction currently are gaps in hedges where the pipe will cross roads. However, two of the most visible sites are located alongside the M56 and M53. Here, large cranes are visible and recently a piling rig was visible close to the M56. The piling rig has been used to create vertical shafts which will be used during excavation of a tunnel for the pipeline. Tunnels will be excavated under the M53 and M56 so that the pipeline can be installed without affecting the motorway. To do this, the main contractor, United Infrastructure, will use a so-called micro-tunneling technique. 
This uses a small tunnel boring machine, or TBM, to excavate the tunnel. Unlike larger TBMs, which install tunnel segments behind them to form the walls, with micro tunneling, the lining of the tunnel is pushed in behind the TBM, which at the same time advances the TBM forward. As I understand it, the pipe will be installed within the tunnel rather than the tunnel lining, forming the pipe itself. Where the pipe runs through open fields, the contractor will use a standard open trench method, which involves excavating a trench into which the pipe is laid. Once the pipe has been laid, the earth is then backfilled and the temporary haul road removed. The land will then be returned back to its previous use, be it farmland or horse pastures. The length of the pipeline means there will be dozens of points where the pipe will have to cross roads and there will also be a number of railways to cross. In order to reduce disruption, a process known as horizontal directional drilling will be used. As the name suggests, this involves using a drill to first bore a horizontal hole and then pull the pipe through the hole. Using this method means that most roads will remain open throughout construction. This is in contrast to the Western Link HVDC cable that people from the Wirral may remember, the installation of which mostly involved using open trenching methods through the roads, which required either temporary lights or road closures during the work. A third technique known as auger boring will also be used. This is somewhat similar to micro tunneling but uses an auger instead of a TBM to excavate the material. Most of the work at the moment is focused on preparing sites, which involves removing hedges, installing temporary fencing and installing a temporary haul road, which will be used to move spoil and to provide a firm base for excavation to take place. Work will likely ramp up next year, with installation of the pipe expected to be completed around 2028. This project is effectively on my doorstep, so it is something that I would like to follow as work progresses. I'm also keen to follow the development of Protoss and the new combined cycle power plant at Connors Quay. I'm hoping to follow other UK wide engineering projects as the channel develops. However, initially I will likely be covering projects closer to home, but if you have any suggestions for projects you'd like to know more about, then let me know in the comments. And if you found this video informative, could I ask that you please give it a like, as it helps my content to get noticed.